Hi, welcome to Access Optical Network's Holographic Data Storage Demo. Today, I will explain how our system writes holographic data into a one centimeter cube volumetric crystal. If you need more information or have questions, there will be contact information at the end of the demo. First component we'll be looking at, green laser. We then send the laser beam through a set of lens systems. We reflect them off of this mirror and into our flat top generator here. We then take the output of the flat top generator and reflect it off this mirror here and into our 50-50 beam splitter here. The beam splitter will split the beam into two equal power on this side, we have the reference beam, and on this side, we have the data beam. Let's look at the data beam path first. We take our data path and reflect it off of this mirror here, and into a lens system that will expand the beam. We then send the expanded beam through a prism that will reflect the beam onto the surface of a special light modulator, which is located here expanded beam that comes out of the prism will reflect the data image displayed on the DOP back through the prism and then through this lens system here. This lens system will compress the data image. The data compressed image is then relayed through the entire crystal which is mounted here. Now let's take a look at the reference beam. The reference beam is sent through this lens system here. This lens system will compress. We need to compress the beam because we need to beam in the center of your dual axis mirror mounted here. This mirror will allow us to move to millions of different locations within the crystal. We then reflect the beam through this lens system here. We then relay the reference beam through the entire crystal here. So we have both beams relaying through the crystal at the same time. This is how we write the holographic data into the crystal. Now let's look at how we read the holographic data image stored in the crystal. To read the holographic data image from the crystal, we first need to close the shutter on the data beam path. We don't need the data beam path to read from the crystal. We then angle the MIMS mirror by sending the MIMS mirror the X and Y coordinates of the stored holographic data image we are looking for. We then open the shutter on the reference beam path, and the reference beam will travel down the same path as before. And then, we, and then when the reference beam reaches the crystal, it would illuminate the holographic data image that is stored at the given X and Y coordinates. The lens system here will capture the illuminated holographic data image from the crystal. The cam sensor, which is mounted here, snaps a digital picture of the image data. And from this point on, it's just digital data. So that's a high level description on how we read and write data from our holographic data storage device. Now, let's take a look at four holographic data images that we wrote into our crystal. This software will allow us to compare the actual image with the holographic data image in the crystal. It will also help us to determine and set threshold values, lack levels, gains, and shutter speeds. The holographic data image from the crystal will appear here in this blackout box. But before that happens, I need to start up a program that will send the X and Y coordinates to the men's mirror. Just give me a second to get that started up. The data should start appearing here shortly. The first image is a simple checker box. You use actual images because it's visually easier to see when the mirror moves from one holographic data image to another. The second image just says hello world. If you use a binary digital image, all you would see are gray and black pixels, making it harder to see any changes. The third image is just some text. 
I would also like to mention that our system uses a SATA link to communicate with computers, just like a disk drive. The fourth and final image is a Princeton University logo. And this will continue repeating itself. And that concludes our demo of the holographic data storage device. Thank you for watching our video. Access Optical Network is completing the research and development of this advanced prototype for the commercialization of this non-volatile storage, which uses a biometric crystal for its media. We believe this technology will enable a new generation of data storage and computation using photons instead of electrons. You are invited to contact us regarding potential investment opportunities through our crowdfunding, angel investor, high net worth individuals, and venture capital fundraising. Thank you and goodbye.